months. Uh, I would like to ask this question to the Intergovernment Relations Minister. Uh, we have our local level government elections just around the corner. And I believe this is one of the last parliament sittings before the LLG elections. And uh, uh, there is um, there is media, uh, media has been released, Minister, uh, that sometimes uh, media are saying that uh, the elections of uh, councillors, uh, presidents will be done by the people. And we governors uh, in Lay, we, in our governors uh, conference, we said uh, elections should be done by the councillors and uh, others said elections should be done by the people. But I am, as you all know, I am one of the longest uh, serving councillors and presidents for yeah. Mount Agen and Western Island province. Uh, if we let the people vote for the councillors, presidents, then we are taking the power for, from the uh, councillors away. It's just like the Prime Minister, our Prime Minister will be elected by the people and we members coming into Parliament, the Prime Minister will have no respect for us. It's just like a power we are trying to take away from our councillors, which is not good at all for local level governments. And I can talk from experience. So, Minister, what is your final um, Decision and the NEC, uh, are we, uh, the councillors are going to elect the president or the people are going to elect the president? Can you tell this house and also the people of Papua New Guinea and the media can take note of that? Thank you. The Honourable Minister for Intergovernment Relations. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker, let me also recognize our brothers on the other side uh, this morning. Uh, secondly, uh, whatever I'm going to present, it will be all of Papua New Guinea to take note of because this is an important uh, issue. And I'd like to, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the uh, Honorable Governor for Western Highlands for raising this very important questions so our people are uh, informed and our members are also informed on the floor of parliament because there's so much confusion going on. Um, on the 13th of uh, January 2024, I've written to uh, Electoral Commission or Electoral Commissioner indicating the dates of uh, local level government elections. So, me like talk talk sabelo or line with me of Papua New Guinea or Papa or Mama who said the Tintin law go law coming election. Please take note of the dates. So my me reading this but dates in up law line law rural communities of Papua New Guinea can take note of and get themselves prepared. <coughs> so, the dates for LNG election is as follows. Issue of REITs is Thursday 27th of June. B or second, nomination closes on Wednesday 3rd of July. That's 4 p.m. 3rd of July. Polling starts Saturday 24th of August. Polling ends February 6th. Polling ends, sorry, polling ends Friday 6th of September. Sorry, pardon me. 
and the re return of rich on or before Thursday, 27th of September. These dates have already been uh, put out in the, in the press. Those are final dates in which the uh, Electoral Commission will conduct uh, coming national, sorry, coming uh, LLG elections. Second issue that Governor has raised, a very important and pertinent issue, and that is the methods, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. There are two methods of electing presidents. One is elected by the ward members. I think that has been the uh, practice for last, uh, was well, since 2019 up until now. But earlier than that, 2012 onward, it was practice at that time that uh, people elect the presidents. Coming back to the issue that government has raised, even up until uh, now, there's still confusion, mainly because of uh, where the person who is making that complaint to me and their experience. Some are indicating that the best option is to have ward members electing the uh, presidents. And others are indicating that it should be given to the people to elect the presidents. I already explained earlier in the government caucus, and I think last term, that, so last, last year, that there are expense involved in these two options. And uh, because of that ongoing issues, the issue was discussed by governor's conference last October. Governor's conference then decided, now let me correct what uh, Governor uh, Western, uh, Western Highlands has indicated, that governors decided, governors decided that the matter be given back to provincial governments. <coughs> That's official resolution. So the, each provincial government would debate because Provincial government consists of both uh, LLG as well as uh, open members. And I think it's a good place for each provincial government to decide as to how they want to uh, elect their presidents. So that was the decision. The decision was to give it to each provincial government to submit their position to my office. And having received all the uh, indication to the PEC, then I'll take the matter up to NEC. And from there, then we can then advise the Governor General to indicate which option is the best option to look at. Well, as I said, no option is the best option, but at least majority decides. So basically, that's what it is. The issue was given back to provincial government to indicate to my office which option they want to look at. And having uh, looked at all the requests that, that uh, come in, then we'll look at which uh, option is favored by provincial governments. And that is something that we'll then present to cabinet. Now, cabinet is a, is a final vetting a body. So again, it should be subject to uh, cabinet's uh, final decision before Governor General gives that okay. I hope that that clears the matter. But having uh, the opportunity to, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, let me also indicate, it may be going away from the issue that has been raised, but I want to indicate to the ward members, uh, particularly uh, uh, in, in, in relation to their, um, their salaries, I want to indicate to ward members all over Papua New Guinea that they are now put on Alaska payroll. So that matter has been finalized between my office as well as uh, DPM. 
and of course Treasury. But at, at the same time, government is looking at how we can enable ward members to perform their duties, not only receiving the, their salaries. Well, in the past, they were not receiving salaries. They were receiving um, a bit of uh, allowances, but this time they are put on salaries so they can perform the duties of government representative on the ground. Mr. Acting Speaker, allow me to also discuss issues about uh, LNG election because it's relevant. And this is in relation to separation of LNG election with national election. Currently, we are, my department is submitting to NEC amendment to section 34. This will enable the LRG election to be conducted 18 months after national election. As experience has already shown to us that every time after national election, at the return by law, at the, re, at the return of reads, or two months, three months after return of reads, LNG election was supposed to be conducted. But because of the fact that resource has been uh, scarce and limited, having conducted a very uh, expensive elections in the past. This has stopped the uh, LNG election to be conducted, which is the case today. So by separation of 18 months, the government can have sufficient uh, revenue to conduct proper election, or LNG election. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, we have a supplementary, Governor Fumanus. Uh, thank you. Uh, supplementary question, Lomigolo, Minister Yolsem. Minister, you talk about the Peninsula Yolsem. Each provincial government, by only giving thinking long all, the one option by you see, the voting all um, councillors, and then NEC, by single NEC, any this NEC by deciding which option to buy me behind him. Thinking from me, you'll say me like put him you look look long end. Why don't you me look look all same? Suppose this provincial government like him this plus option where people buy mark him. Now this plus provincial government will like him, cancel as he mark him. Why don't you me like him equal to thinking long all you endorse him, and NEC endorse him? If you are in thinking long or two of options, rather than you will oppose him, you will like one of options. Thank you. The Honorable Minister for Intergovernment Relations. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker, and thank you, Governor, for Manu's very, very good uh, suggestion. There are also cost factors in WOW. I think uh, I've already explained that in our government caucus last year. Election of uh, presidents by people is, is similar to conducting uh, election of uh, regional members in the national election. And um, it's, when you look at the uh, council uh, presidents, we have about 300 different LLGs, and you're looking at 300 different presidents to be uh, elected in. So this means that it requires huge resources. I just want to make that point so that you are aware of, mindful of uh, this factor before we can consider this option. This option uh, also means that when you elect a president by people, he's just like a mini MP, open member. You can only change him at the next election, unless we make provisions to allow for intervention to occur if a council president is uh, misbehaving in his office. Otherwise, as it is now, it, it has that, uh, that uh, option or that particular uh, problem that, has, that is associated with uh, a president being elected by people. But that's a choice for each provincial government to, to make. But I've taken note of what you have said. Uh, what we can do, depending on uh, uh, 
request of provincial governments, we can also submit that option with the other option to the cabinet to make a decision. Okay, let me clarify properly. When I mentioned that the provincial government make their recommendations, so they, they go along these two options. Maybe we have 22 provincial government. 50% of them will recommend election by, by the people, or another 50% will recommend election by the ward members. Okay, we make that recommendation to the cabinet to make that decision. That's one option. One option, as Governor Manus has said. Then we look at what each provincial government is recommending, and maybe that's an option that we can recommend, but that's subject to uh, eventually, eventually to uh, NEC to make a decision based on financial uh, resources that uh, entail in terms of conducting elections. So yeah, it's, it's not just a simple issue of uh, deciding what option to decide, but also resource factor involved when we are conducting uh, uh, 330 different council presidents throughout Papua New Guinea. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The Governor for West New Britain. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, question below me, me like ask him, uh, Law Minister Blow, State Enterprises. Mr. Acting Speaker, uh, being a former uh, state-owned enterprise minister and being a minister responsible for initiating SOE reforms and thereby securing 500 million US dollar support from Asian Development Bank, mainly based on the some few important uh, factors that merit-based appointments and also to bring efficiency into the operations of company. Acting Speaker, where are we at our semi-privatization exercise as we know that the services of all our utility companies are deteriorating? The blackouts are unbearable. The travel with the Guinea is very challenging. So, Mr. Acting Speaker, are we still continue to, going, continue to give excuse as we try to avoid fire sale. This word fire sale time me minister yet na me wogla harim me plus stop him algata something slow him down. So by giving this excuse we continue to deteriorate service and we are failing to provide that much needed service to our people. Mr Acting Speaker me like Savetu or Sam now two plus balus blue you me seven six seven yeah me go underneath low go go low. Uh, heavy maintenance, na yumi waklo leasing. Inap yumi look look low, leasing one plus proper 767 or 787 since yumi order in Finnish sample 787. Enap yumi leasing 787 even if it is expensive so that we can give that reliability, na tool of safety. Mr. Acting Speaker, you, you put yourself in the shoes of people who need to, you know, attend appointments, who needs to, you know, attend to medical emergencies who needs to bring some dead bodies from Singapore, wherever. So how do you feel when you miss like, you know, two or three, con you know, continuous nights keeping dead bodies or with children and with uh, failing to me meet an appointment? And how do we also address these blackout issues in view of the current, you know, challenges uh, with Puma Energy Supply, which has released some statements, you know, talking about uh, Jackson's airport location agreement. You know, they are terminating the aviation fuel supply agreement with the Enugini. And that termination start uh, to be effective from 15 May 2024. So how is it going to affect you know, our ability to supply fuel, our, especially aviation fuel, to our airline? And also, how are we strategizing you know, to address that fuel supply to our PNG power? And they've, in fact, reduced uh, the credit terms. So these are you know, major challenges uh, right now uh, in front of us. So, so Acting Speaker, the only solution is to really partner with uh, the industry experts and semi-privatizing without uh, fear of uh, you know, losing. What is the point of you know, we lose money every year, hundreds of millions of kina, rather the situation ca can change immediately you know, to become a positive cash flow by semi-privatizing uh, semi some of these you know, utility companies. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The Honourable Minister for State Enterprise. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker. I want to uh, thank the, the Governor for Western Britain for this very important question. Uh, uh, the Governor knows what the issues are, having been a uh, former Minister in Trevor, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, and I also want to give him credit for citing the ADB-led uh, SOA reform program, which resulted in a significant amount of money being uh, given to the government of uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker, <coughs> the good governor has uh, asked many questions, starting with how, 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 about seven of ours. So I want to uh, request him to put those questions in writing. And I think uh, that people of our country uh, deserve to... Uh, to know at least some answers from, from, from myself and from this government in relation to our important SOE. So I want to ask him to put those, uh, all of those questions in writing so that I can, uh, I can respond in Parliament and may, may perhaps make a ministerial statement. But uh, in a nutshell, uh, I can uh, give three examples of companies which are struggling, as all, all of us know, starting with New Guinea. And uh, as all of you know, we've, uh, with the approval of, uh, of this government, uh, gone uh, past the point of uh, 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 organizing or requesting uh, financing to purchase uh, 11 uh, air, uh, planes from Airbus. Uh, they are scheduled to arrive, first ones uh, starting next year. Uh, we I unfortunately cannot provide immediate answers and immediate solutions to the problems, but uh, in the long term, we do see some uh, solutions, and starting with the replacement of our very aging uh, planes, uh, as we all know, F-100s and F-70s, uh, the aircraft manufacturing company has ceased producing them uh, starting in 2019. So like all the other airline companies, uh, we are looking at replacing them. With the case of uh, the issue of whether we can lease 767s and 737s, uh, it depends on the availability of uh, those kind of planes in the aircraft market. It is in fact a depressed market for uh, leasing and subleasing of aircrafts. We have been looking at all, all the options. Uh, we also have to look at the cost factors, or those are being looked at, but uh, we would prefer to lease uh, 737 because we know that we will be purchasing uh, two Dreamliners, the 737s, that will come on during the fleet uh, next year. So our preference is to lease any available 737, but uh, the current market is such that, and I can inform the governor that uh, there are no cheaper uh, immediately available 737s compared to 767. So those are the challenges we are facing. Eventually, uh, down the line, as we all know, governments are not good in running businesses. We will follow the trend that we are seeing in other countries, and we will go down the path of selling down any guinea. But our intention is to, is to fix what we've got f first instead of adopting the lazy uh, way out and selling them at fire sales, uh, to use the term used by our governor. Uh, the same uh, situation is for PNG Power, but in the case of PNG Power, as you all know, uh, this government, the Marabi Rosa government, has uh, put its money where its, its mouth is, and it has already allocated 211 million kina. That money has been released. Uh, most of the money is now being used to order the equipment that has been identified by many, many experts whom we have engaged. We've engaged about five different uh, uh, experts to help us uh, turn our company around. And there's enough literature available for this company telling us what needs to be done. We know what can be done. Uh, and it's only a matter of time, together with the, uh, the allocation of money, which we now have. And I can inform this parliament that we have already uh, spent 115 million kina ordering parts which are not here uh, from overseas. And as we know, we, like other companies in this country, are experiencing forex issues. So once we're able to get those parts, we will be able to uh, fix all the uh, aging infrastructure that PNG Power has. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the personnel that we have, uh, if I can inform this house, uh, we have uh, realized that our own people are our worst enemies. We have uh, entrusted them and put them in positions of responsibility in that company. And unfortunately, they have let us down. And we have now started looking offshore to bring the experts that we need to help turn our very important company around. The days of appointing cronies and appointing one talks to our SOEs are long gone now. And as the good governor alluded to, as part of the ADB-led uh, reform program, we've farmed out the important uh, aspect of recruitment to overseas-based consultants who do not reside in this country, 
but they are offshore. So anyone who wants to apply for those important posts of the uh, chairman and directors and even CEOs of our companies have to apply by email to the recruitment companies and they go through a process. What the cabinet finally receives is a finely reformed product that comes to cabinet for appointment to those important positions. So we have changed those things around and uh, as they say, good things take time to come, to, to come and you will soon see the benefits of all the hard work that we are putting in now. So in the case of uh, PNG Power, uh, you will have realized that uh, uh, power to Port Mosby is full, it's fully energized. We have been now power uh, generating sources from Edebu, from Dirio, from New Power, and from our traditional uh, sources uh, at Sirinumu. So there is enough power now. What we need now is new infrastructure to replace the infrastructure, uh, replacing the old uh, transmission lines, uh, transformers, and the connectivity, uh, connecting system here, together with new, more competent and commit, committed people at PNG Power to help turn this company around. So once again, we now have the money. We know where the issues are. Soon, you will have no issues. And I did uh, indicate uh, before Christmas that by Christmas, there will be no power blackouts in Ley and Port Mosby, and that happened. There were no power blackouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are quite determined to tick all the boxes that require required to tick, and we will see that uh, our, our SOEs then uh, uh, become companies that we will all be proud of. So to, to, uh, to conclude, uh, Mr. Uh, Assistant uh, Acting Speaker, in the case of the uh, question of whether we should sell all our SOEs, yes, it depends on timing. We are not a country that is uh, really, really that bankrupt such that we will go down the path of selling our SOEs. We have options available. We can either go, we can, issue, we can either uh, go, or we can either use the uh, issue of uh, uh, parcel privatization or look at the Singaporean model. As you know, Lee Kuan Yew, because he was there for a longer period of time, he was able to bring in experts from other countries. He did not trust his own people. He brought in experts. He gave them time. He paid them well. He made sure that they delivered. And if you look at Singapore, Singapore has never sold its SOE. They are gold mines. And they continue to deliver for the people. So we have those choices. And eventually, all of us will be asked to make those very important decisions. It will not be a decision made by the government or myself as a minister. It will be a decision that will be made by our leaders in this house. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. The Honorable Member for Bulolo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hello. Thank you, people of Bulolo, only this time on, on the side of the house. Uh, before we start, may I just uh, wish him you yet one time, old brother, live upside, uh, happy belated Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> We must bring some love back into the house because I stay in the automobile. Uh, my question without notice, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, by Kopegen Lo, uh, Ex Minister. Uh, before me ask him, like, thank you, Lo, Ex Minister, Lo, visit him, District Blumi. Uh, without my knowledge, but at least I'm gonna, after I release my statement on the media, on the Connect TNC. So. Uh, my Acting Speaker. Uh, yesterday, we were taken through a very uh, lengthy uh, presentation by the minister on the Connect PNG program. Uh, while it was music to the government's ears, for some of us, it reaffirmed our concerns. And I hope the minister can answer my questions. Now, without telling the House, he will go and come back tomorrow with answers. Um, on page 12, Amigo Begenlo, report us on page 12 of the minister's statement. Honorable, uh, honorable member for Bulolo, um, may I interrupt you on your question, race? If you are referring your question to the statement made by the minister yesterday, I would not allow for it because it is already on the uh, on motion for debate, which is yet to be debated. The statement has been not yet to be debated that you cannot ask any question uh, in related to that. Uh. Oh. 
Honorable Member, sorry, you resume your seat um, in more clarification on that. Whatever is already, it's now on the motion uh, notice paper. So whatever is already on the notice paper, you cannot uh, ask a question related to that. Uh, Honorable uh, Member, I understand, uh, Honorable Member, I understand if you want to refrain from asking question on that and ask other question, I will allow for that. Honorable uh, Member. Just a question here. I didn't ask the question yet. It's just around the bush, so I will get there. Uh, Honorable uh, Member. I will listen to the question. If the question is related to what I have said yes, earlier, sir. I will make a ruling again. Yes, Go sir. ahead. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, my questions are as follows. Uh, can, the, can the minister confirm how much of the 65 million kina has been dispersed and to which contractor? Number two, if there are backlogs in funding allocations. Honorable member, that will still be applied to the statement made by the minister, so my apology that I will rule your question out. The Honourable Member for Meneama. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Look, look Samuel, Lord, people from Meneama. Honourable Members, the Chair has made a decision of who to speak, so let the Member for Meneama. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Now, look, Samuel, Lord, people from Meneama. Your first time through me asking questions without notice. Maki Mouse from people from Meneama. Uh, Maggie Mouse from family. Clan with me representing Blame Mibla, like passing Bell Sore, Blame Mibla, all of people from Madan, the people from Pusino Bundi, no Lucy One plus Strong, the leader of the country. I'm not passing Bibla Bell Sore, Blame Mibla. The government from Mara Perroso, and plus Strong, the man where Mibla Lucimem, so the Lord is not dying, Mibla bringing Bell Sore, so I'm sorry, Blame Mibla, people from Miami. Thank you. One time, this last question, blow me. When no guy talks over there, me like ask him, Prime Minister, blow me, pla. And this last question, where he got one blah report, a Prime Minister, and he's been given one blah work law, a first time Minister of Petroleum law, this is a heavy blow, uh, my energy, energy crisis, law, country, blow me, pla. Honorable Member for Minema, sorry for interrupting you. I was. I uh, interfered by the clerk, and I did not hear who you direct your question to. The Prime Minister. To the Prime Minister. Prime go, Minister. go ahead. Thank you. Now, me looking was the new energy crisis, and we still stop here. So, me ask him, good for Prime Minister, blow me a This is report, and we'll give some work, find him out. The Prime Minister, too, been talking about us, and he got some money, where I'm setting up this place, so he committee, or state of emergency committee, or working work, find him out. Now, no pain him, solo send to this levy. Now, me like asking Prime Minister. Now, how much money go to this This black committee law, or this black state of energy law, pain him work, a pain him heavy blow, a pain him solo send to this black heavy way, stop the country, blow me or energy crisis. This law will come up in this or no cut. So, was me black pain him heavy, a pain him solo send in this and country and so was me black pain him a solo send in this. Not this plan money where uh, committee been set him up them. Thank you. The Honourable Prime Minister. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, the, I want to appreciate the member for Minyama's uh, question. I, the Puma issue has been ongoing since uh, uh, for some time now. In pursuit of finding permanent solution, Cabinet uh, a while ago did approve, uh, based on a submission of the then Energy Minister, uh, approved uh, uh, 8 million kina uh, support for a team to be put behind to ascertain exactly what are the issues that is behind the Puma uh, saga. Uh, that I was advised. Uh, the two million kina has been remitted. We are yet to receive a fullest report uh, on the committee's work. Uh, when, now that the former minister has left uh, the government ranks, uh, we have assembled chief secretary 
and his team to get to work. And since two weeks ago, they have been pulling in uh, Central Bank, uh, the banks, and I want to appreciate BSP and, and Kina Bank and Central Bank for the understanding that this is not normal time. Puma has been since 2014. Puma has been the dominant market supplier of the petrol, petroleum, uh, uh, petroleum products, uh, especially the precarious uh, situation where they are the only supplier to our airline industry. And so in that context, we've been uh, trying our best to ramp up. Uh, the investigation into what really happened, I want to indicate to this country I'm somewhat dismayed that despite two million cannot pay to that committee, that report has not come forth as yet. Uh, two million kina may be small to some consultants, but it is a big amount of money to, to do work, especially when it is a everyday work for those who are paid to do this work. And uh, after us, the National Energy Authority, our central bank, our chief secretary, you don't need to ask for more money to do what is your everyday job. Sit down, get to work, and uh, the team is working. Uh, they've asked Central Bank to produce the report that gives the black spot on Puma if it is a black spot. I want to indicate to our country that Central Bank has not yet come forth. And all of us should know by now Central Bank operates at arm's length from the Treasury. Central Bank does not come directly under the control of uh, the executive government. They are independent. That independence has been maintained by us thus far. Uh, but in the national interest, we've asked them that what is the what is the black spot, what is the impropriety, what is the illeg illegality of Puma's existence in our country, and that report has been worked upon. Uh, from a combined meeting we've had with Central Bank, uh, Puma, uh, Chief Secretary, the National Energy Authority, and, and uh, myself and our Treasury team. Uh, Puma does continue to transact out of their operation base in Singapore. Singapore has not shut down their operations. They transact in Singapore to supply their clients elsewhere in the Pacific, including Papua New Guinea. Uh, Central Bank has been asked to come back to us uh, with what is exactly the issue that made uh, them cast a shadow of doubt over Puma and what, uh, what that made BSP and other banks hesitant to allow for the Puma's operational account with, uh, with those commercial banks. Uh, Central Bank is in the process of uh, furnishing to us that report. We've been asked to bring it ASAP. It has now been almost uh, three years in the making that we've been running around in circle in, in as far as Central Bank's uh, conclusion is concerned. They've been asked to go to Singapore and elsewhere where Puma is operated if there is any in propriety and certainly corresponding banks elsewhere, uh, including corresponding research bank elsewhere, could establish those improprieties. And I want to assure this House that a long-term solution is being looked upon so that we are not overly reliant on one dominant supplier, uh, as well as the short-term measures are being looked upon. Uh, I note that early today or in the, in the last week or so, they have been ramped up, signaled that they reduce operations in the country. Uh, I want to also give assurance we have not isolated Puma out completely. We are working with them so that supply can be maintained. I thank BSP for extending uh, the account uh, in, 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 in BSP. I appreciate Central Bank's intervention to the market to allow Kina, Kina Bank to continue on holding uh, a, a greater level of Forex to ensure fuel supply is supplied. I want to also give, uh, give indication to our country. Uh, our, and New Guinea under KCH, uh, looking at also alternate fuel supply. And we work in alternate solutions for our country for the medium term and long term going forward. And I, I, I want to say, two million kina has gone across to those who are supposed to do the job. I'm waiting for the report to come into our office to make some progress on matters that they see fit to be progressed upon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Uh, Honourable uh, Member, what's your point of order? Yes. Uh, I just want to correct that Prime Minister. Perhaps he's so busy and he forgets that we had already tabled a final report when I was still a minister. Uh, by law, 
A state of emergency under these sort of situations can only be for 30 days. When the state of emergency was declared, there was no funding. We immediately get, got to work, and so we had to use that Energy Authority's administrative funds. Uh, and we ran the emergency for honorable 30, member, 30 honorable days. Member, I would not allow you to make a statement no, using the point of order. Point and, of order and also, Speaker. honorable member, the Prime Minister have already summed up the question, uh, answers to the question, which yeah, I, I cannot can allow. It. You should I can have... raise it at any point in time. What he said is that no final report was given. I'm saying it was given. And he also said funds were given and not properly accounted for. I'm trying to get to that too. So that's the point of order. Clarity needs to be given because these sort of situations cast in windows on people. Not on, not on just me, but on the Chief Secretary, on the Managing Director of National Energy Authority, and all the other good people who Honorable Member, I, would, I will interrupt you. I will not allow you to make a longer statement on the point of order, if you have raised so. Honorable Member, I wish you seat. The Honourable Member for North Fly. Ask him to talk to the Minister of the Works. Um, the interesting minister. <laughs> favorite player. Uh, favorite for me because um, I, I just want to make a specific um, question relating to the East Department. And Mr. Acting Speaker, this is in regard to Telephoning Road. Telephoning road always is catching the cats and the flowery of this country. And there is one fact that everyone must know. Uh, Honorable member, we have a point of order. Yeah. Acting speaker, point of order, let me go and let me ask him first question. Just for the last parliament session, the good minister for works, let me be explained, please. Lord, this is a question, Blonay. So this is my point of order. Honorable member, thank you for raising your concern. I will rule your point of order out of order. I'll let the minister to. Uh, honorable member. Thank you. Because I'm former Mingroom workman, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, um, Telephoning Road is a, is, is a subject of interest for many of us. And for me, particularly, Northfly in Western Province, it connects Northfly with the West Pacific. And so the questions are as follows in this manner. Minister, when I ask you a few questions in the recent or last sitting, you answered some questions, but those questions were never fully disclosed. So I did all my research, and here I would like to present some information which you will have to explain to myself, the host of Teddy Mining, plus the people of Western Province and PNG. Every time, Minister, or Mr. Ekin Speaker, when the Minister presents to this House, he has never been informing the House of where the funding comes from to fund his telephoning road. He indicates in this House that the funding is coming from Connect PNG, the 5.6 percent all the time. But I want to inform this House and the people of North Fly and Western Province people that the telephoning road funding comes from Octedi Tax Credit Scheme 100%. So these are the questions that I would like to ask the Minister. Minister, would you confirm that there has never been any funding from 5.6% of the Connect PNG that funds your telephoning road? And you always boast about Connect PNG funding telephone road forever. Where you should give credit due to the people of Western Province for funding yeah. the road. Never one record, you have never acknowledged that. Honorable member, ask your question. So that's the ask first question. question. So that's the first question. The second question is would the minister confirm and deny that telephone road was 100% funded using OTML tax credit scheme and the contractor is Ibwens? at the value of almost 200 and 236 million contract, uh, 2 million contract, and 119.7 million paid so far, 
and we have a balance of 116.7 million yet to pay. Why I make that statement? Because, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, there are about five, five approved projects for people of Western Province sitting in queue, expecting the funding to come from tax credit scheme, including Daru Town Road, that 68 million kina, where it comes from the Minister for Livestock, the Daru Town Rehabilitation. Yet the minister sees fit to sit there, not to rest to his minister. So the issue is there are many, many road contractors or projects in Western province. And yet, no acknowledgement, no nothing. So other question is this, the final question. Minister, would you agree with me and say that your Connect PNG program is not the Connect PNG, it's a con act that you work with Connect MIPLA, people of North Fly, people of Western province, talk about them. Mixing money will connect PNG in the final telephone road and confirm the constraint. So that's the question I want to raise to the minister. He needs to confirm that yes, I deny or I confirm that this is what he's doing. And the last question is this. Is this. Octary mining becomes a family mining. And I say this because he pushed to place his own brother from telephoning as the current managing director. And he's now controlling the house. Our honorable uh, member, we have a point of order, uh, Prime Minister. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The standing order clearly makes it absolutely clear. No imputations, no inferences, no assumptions. Uh, this parliament is not a place where you bring people who cannot defend themselves into disrepute. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, you need to you need to you need to inform the honourable member on the other side to read the standing orders. You can have every right to ask your question, but no imputations, no inferences, not to bring a professional public into disrepute. Mr. Speaker, honourable Prime Minister, your point of order is in order. Uh, honourable member, I would last ask you to refrain from mentioning uh, professional people into. Your questions. Mr. I didn't call the person's name. It's what I did. Anyway, I, I, I withdraw if uh, I'm feeling pain. But I was asking the, the minister. But the reality is true. So the question is Is Octavi mine your own personal family member mining? Because his own brother from California is managing. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank question. you. The, the honourable member needs to refrain the use of word family, mine, uh, is it your personal mine, and that's inferences, that's imputations. You need to allow him to withdraw the statement for this handset. Uh, the, the, the managing director in the question has been with Octary Mine for 30 years. He extended the life of Octary Mine by 20 years. He's a professional. He is the one, for the first time, Sealing road from Kyunga to Tabubil for the first time. Yeah. He's the one for the first time through Octary tax credit doing road from Tabubil to also be for the first time. Uh, this is tax credit, state fund. State fund being utilized to support important projects his people have missed out for so long. Mr. Speaker, don't bring a professional Papua again into this report. Honorable uh, member for not fly, uh, Prime Minister, your point of order is in order. I will ask you to withdraw that, and from the chair itself, would like you to um, withdraw the word on a national program, which it is giving benefit to many people, and uh, naming the program as CON. As a chair, I think it is unparliamentary to make that, so I would like to ask you to withdraw that statement also. In case, uh, uh, that, thank you, Acting Speaker. I, I withdraw that first uh, family uh, business name I, I tried to... Uh, take against the okay, that I withdraw. But let me uh, inform you, Acting Speaker, the word corn is a dictionary word, in case you don't know. The word corn means don't, don't pursue somebody to believe in something. That's called oh, Honorable, uh, honorable uh, member. So, so anyway, honorable uh, member, this is from the chair. The word corn, as you have described on the dictionary, it's interpreted by people out there. That corn is used on Another interpretation by the Papua New Guineans, which I feel it's not better to be used on that. 
All member will allow the minister to ask your question. Uh, answer your question. Uh, Honourable uh, Minister, you answer the question. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, through you, acting speaker, me, I want to ask law good luck question. Law colleague member, blow me now. Never blow me. not fly. Um, it's always very, very, very fascinating. Now I'm so like interest through. Now it's our talk talk plan till the road to. But I'm not realizing what I'm planning something, not thinking I'm not in a threat. As a leader, he should be supporting this program. And giving support to this program so that the people or the district next to him, telephone district, should connect the road so that they can support also the district of Northfly, who will contribute economically to that province, uh, district. Now, I'm not realizing two of them, Octary, about 40% of telehomings are working to Octary mine to contribute to Octary. In terms of tax, now I'm allocating equity, I'm allocating royalty, I'm allocating kind, kind of benefit. I'm not realizing this plot too. Now, also, there are people very close to his electorate, and also, he has never given anything to them. So, Long me go ahead. Honorable Minister, we end up we have a point of order. Mr. Acting Honorable Speaker, Member. Mr. Acting Speaker, it would be a learned minister just simply answer the questions. What do you know? Honorable Member, your point of order is in order. Just let the uh, uh, minister continue on to answer your question. You got good blah or four blah, ask him some, me like him some blah, all background past then, I'll be in my answer review. The road from Tawuville to Telefomin, almost 80% is in Western Province, and he's electorate of Northfly. Oh. <laughs> also, the road. Honorable, uh, honorable member, uh, honorable minister, you resume your seat. Honorable member, this will be the last time I ask you for point of order, so I will entertain you on the point of order. No, it's, it's very interesting because he doesn't know the geography. The minister doesn't know the geography, where the 80%. If that's a lie, half, almost 50 or 60% is still forming in West Indies, because what is time to do. So it's not true. O honorable, uh, honorable member, I will rule you. 80% is not in West Indies. Honorable so member. Honourable Member, I will rule your point of order out of order. Let the Minister uh, reply from what he had to reply to your question. So as you feel in pain, you surround the scene me, I'm sorry for blasting. This plan, half percentage, long end in the road. One plan LLG, I'm also with LLG. Now time for me, me kiss him this plan road called Samuel LLG, just to give the wrote to his people. And they are my people too, but they vote for James Donald using this road, and they voted for him. And he did not appreciate anything. So as a leader from that mean area, Octet is within the mean area, and Telephone is regarded as preferred area. You from Awin, you from Yongom. You cannot speak language with them, but I can speak the same language. Yeah. <laughs> I have my clan on this side, and Telehome in so We speak the same language, we are same culture, we are same people. So, they are my people because of, they are my people, I deliver the road through Orshobit. And give them the road, and I deliver the road to Telehome. You should be really happy as a leader. Honourable mm. Member, uh, Governor, what's your point of order? Whilst I appreciate the argument between the two members, um, there is a growing uh, culture that ministers, prime ministers, will always say, me give him, me give him, me give him. The question, I think the basic question asked by the minister, uh, the member to the minister, is one of accountability and transparency. And now. So okay, can we confine the answer what was the contract value? How much has been paid? 
Was it properly tendered? Who applied for the tender? And so on and so forth. I think that would, because these are public funds. This is, this is not money that belongs to Western Province. It is not money that belongs to West Sipik or even to Telefomin. It is tax credit which comes out of the consolidated revenue and that fund belongs to the people of Papua New Guinea. So let's get some transparency. Please correct. Oh, honorable uh, Look and talk, blow you or blow Prime Minister or and blow Papua New Guinea. You know blow you. Honorable Governor, your point of order is in order. Uh, honorable Minister, I think you have given enough background of your relationship between you and a uh, and member. So I, I would ask you to go straight to the question that he asked in related to the funds that is given to that. So the more information of you knowing, I think we know that you're both from one area. So uh, the information we have for you both, uh, you go straight to the question as the point of what I has pointed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker. Uh, all brother, you feel in pain, I stop. So by me, answering for plan. By me, answering for plan. Question for you. Uh, Connect PNC 5.6%, it contributes to the road because they're missing link. Now, that was one of those two first missing links, Finsafen to Lay and Tawubil to Telefomen. So Connect PNG and we support him. Also, Connect PNG is the tax credit scheme where all areas where all mine, now all gas, now oil stuff, all tax credit we will give him support to. Tax credit and money block government. And money block government. Two percent. One percent they go along all project province or areas. Now another one percent they go around the country. So connect PNG funds through tax credit block thirty. Two percent and money block government. So only align one them connect PNG lo fund him or roads long Papua New Guinea. Now how will tell him one blah blah is the road. Now all five blah projects blow you. One blah blah all them daru road ceiling. Now road blue Lali Speed you go along upside blow Indonesia. I'm cross to by you kiss him. Now all now blow roads too. So tax credit. And one blah big blah blong and them ceiling road blow come up blow go to Tabu Bill. You should be appreciative of all these ones. Because of Connect PNG. Number two question blow you. Blow 236 million. And um, Octary tax credit, we fund him, and um, all he got, all records, blow this blah. Through the office, blow me, blow here, blow Mosby, blow Waigani, and me got record, blow this blah. Suppose you got record, now you kiss him record, long all, and but you must confirm. By me confirming this blah, figure one them, all Octary. But me know, say, I must only pay him for doctor. Number three, he went construction. Yes, this play road. And um, former government is stop all is starting. Now time only go out. New black government come in and we continue. So even construction was the contractor awarded the contract to start the road. And for me and my people in Telefomin and also your people in also are very happy with this road. Very happy with this road. If it wasn't this contractor even construction this is road in now reach him, all people blow me to blah. But also with people, not home in people. So there are times that you must talk thank you. There are times that you must talk thank you. 119 million, and me no not look clear of this blood too, but me must take him. You talk, you pay him 119 million, but me must take him Octary. But Octary got own system long all yet, contract long all yet, and all company only got contract long all system long all yet. So this problem I'm checking. Now you talk about connect, um, you say we connect PNG, um, through through na I'm in work lo pawani kini. I'm through through na work i kamab lo pawani kini. So I think some of them you must give him credit where it's due. All last plus him do you long family contract na this family managing director na this plan. Honorable, uh, Honorable Minister, that I will not allow you to answer that because there's a point of order being raised and I've asked the member and he withdrew that already so I would not allow you to 
do an explanation on that. Doctor, thank you. One time this floor, I think them all question uh, all the time you ask him yet, but all the time you must have almost the same road every yeah. people from yeah. Thank you. Honorable members, our question time had lapsed. The Honorable Governor for Oro. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Honorable Member. Honorable, uh, Honorable Governor, I will recognize you. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, Prime Minister has a reply to a question that has been ra raised in the uh, last parliament, but after him I will recognize you. The Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, 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 thank you Speaker. My apologies to uh, Governor for uh, Oro Province. I'll keep it short. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, the other day uh, I seek leave of uh, the Chair to uh, make a uh, 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 reply to a question asked by uh, go Governor for uh, ECP on employment data, Mr. Speaker. Is leave granted? Aye. Go ahead. Mr. Speaker, the uh, two sessions ago, the good Governor of ECP did ask some questions on what is the employment figure. And uh, in that question, I did give full assurance that I will reply. Uh, to him in the actual so people behind desk from 8 o'clock to 4.06 or from 7 o'clock to uh, 5, 5 o'clock every afternoon in his definition of employment. I did point that on this side our definition of employment is fundamentally different and deeper and deeper, more fuller. We don't just look at employment from the context of a paid job, uh, sitting behind a desk or sitting behind a paid position. We look in as far as employment in totality, more so to do with people's employment, uh, people's empowerment rather, where they engage in economic activities. But nonetheless, he wanted to, uh, me to define employment from his context, and that is actual day job or night jobs per person who earning salary. And uh, we also in the business of growing employment, the six big LNG and mining projects we have uh, that is coming on board as well as our focus on agriculture. I'll focus on the other sectors of economy with broader space. And I want to give number in my reply that time, I asked him and I asked his house to put a hand on 2018 numbers, 2019 numbers up to 2023. Mr. Speaker, it is my distinct pleasure to give some number if it is of any help to the uh, leader who asked this question and to all of us. 2018, our agriculture, forestry, and fishery sector employment, by the way, this data comes from IRC and not from James Marapa's electoral office. Uh, so IRC has these numbers. Any one of you are most welcome to go and pick from IRC because this emanates straight from those who pay personal income tax. In the sec agriculture sector, and agriculture, forestry, and fishery sector, in 2018, we had 54,008 employees in that sector. In 2019, we had 55,674 in that sector, 73. In 2020, we had 29,084. We all can understand the COVID-19 impact that caused that huge decline. Right one year on after that, there was a rebound in that sector to 64,357. In 2022, a massive double figure of 138,728 figure, uh, double up the biggest ever expansion in our nation's history in the agriculture, forestry, and fisheries sector. That confirms treacherous assets on the non-resource sector GST, uh, non-resource sector GDP has been posting a 4% plus growth consistently for the last three years, Mr. Speaker. Put your finger on these numbers. If you think I'm lying, I don't lie unnecessarily. I don't lie. Go down to IRC. Some at the back are known to spew, spew continuous lie to our people. Mr. Sec Mr. Mr. Speaker, in the mining and quarry and petroleum sector, we've had 12,657. In 2018, we had 15,809 in 2019. We had 14,519 in 2020. We had 12,591 in 2021. 
we have 13,418 in 2022. We had 9,268 in 2023. There is a slight decline in this one, but it will rebound again very soon when we have the other projects coming on board. In the manufacturing sector, we have 15,449 in 2018. The reference point to 2018 Papua New Guinea is simple. That's under previous administration. We cross over in 2019. In 2019, we had 13,871 who were paying tax. In 2020, 18,734 who were paying tax. You ask me why in 2020, even in COVID-19, you have this number seemingly increase? I'll tell you the reason. Our government subsidized local production in the food space. Local production in the food space with COVID-19 induced global market shrinking. We did subsidize a little bit in the food sector. I want to also indicate in 2021, it went to 22,982 in 2020, 2021, rather, and in 2022, in the manufacturing sector, there were 175,568 paying tax to IRC in 2022. In 2023, 178,706 who were paying tax. If you look at this one, last year, 178,000. 706 paying tax, you look at a 2018 figure, only 15,449 paying tax in the <coughs> sector. Big, big jump in the non-resource sector of our GDP. In the electric, and uh, I could run the electricity and gas and water supply figure there, there's an increase in that space. I will circulate this table to all members of parliament so that we for once speak with facts and not assumptions, assessments, thinking that you know better than the rest of us. Thinking you know better than the rest of us. This is our country. We are equally concerned about our people. We work in this sector also. I want to also point, there was a, there's a, uh, in the overall figure, if I could give in the interest of time, Mr. Speaker, to respect your chair. In all in all, in the quantum overall, in 2018, there was 453,222 people in the private sector in employment. This is not to include the government sector. I want to announce to our country, my government, one of the obligations we have to ourselves is to curtail. No expansion in the public service recurrent. We don't want to increase the public sector employee space except police, health worker, and teachers. And the magistral services, those will see some increase, but the rest we're putting a stop. But in the private sector employment space, in 2018, there was 453 1,222. In 2019, 484,811. In 2023, in all in all, in all sectors, we have 547,839. There's an evidence of increase in employment numbers. But I want to inform this House, this is not substantial. This is not massive. If it took us 44 years up till 2018, to only create 453,222 jobs for every citizen. Then, needless for us to blame anyone, all of us must work together to diversify the economy, create a bigger space, and grow the economy. It all comes through prudence, strong hands, and management of the economy. You can, you can say you can run the economy, but it takes a real man and a real team to run it in tough times. We've run in the last four tough years, we're coming out in the tough times. We know where our goalpost is. We're moving towards prosperity for our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable uh, Minister for Higher Education, I believe you have a self-explanation. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker. I have a matter of public importance, and I would like to seek leave of uh, the Chair to do a personal explanation with regards to a post-career report by a million Baroy dated the 1st February 2024. Leave granted, make your speech. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, the news report insuated uh, that I was one of the uh, ministers that authorized a fraudulent payment to a named law firm. 
uh, my political rivals and, and those that are naive in mindset have capitalized on it to tarnish uh, my good reputation and uh, my good character, Mr. Acting Speaker. However, I forgive uh, all uh, those for the misconstrued misunderstandings, falsehood that has been rumored in the social media, the cunning insinua insinuations that I have seen, and the deceptive computer animations that uh, culminated to criminalizing or demonizing both the Prime Minister Honorable James Marape and myself. I urge those that are blind and don't see things clearly to acknowledge the following fruits or sexualities. Mr. Acting Speaker, the first is that the a named law firm, I literally fraudulently pay, uh, paid, matter is before a court. And therefore it is a subjudicial matter. But I see so freely discussed by Papua New Guineans, even by members of this uh, Honorable House, through the social media and everywhere. The matter is under judicial consideration and therefore prohibited from public discussions every, anywhere, anywhere else, because it is in the court. The court is the covering place to discuss and establish the truth. I therefore ask that the freedom of speech and the use of the agents of social media be not abused, corrupted, or misapplied without responsibility like I've seen happen very recently, the leader of this board of no confidence period, and I've seen it getting more heavy and thicker and more hotter but only to uh, maliciously deface my good character and reputation and ask that people refrain from doing that because the matter is before court and I'm not one of those parties. I'm not one of those parties and I am irrelevant in this case. Secondly, I've been a member for kind of open election for over the last two decades. Now, in fact, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, this term of parliament is my candidate fifth term as member for Kandip, and I'm proudly doing my job yeah. as a member, yeah. and as a member of my colleagues on the floor of parliament. In those years, ever since 2002 when I got elected, up to the present status, I have never had any single taint or dot in my career, not even a single one, none. I'm saying it humbly, but also some pride that I don't have the dot. Prior to my entering politics in 2022, I had a clean record as a civil engineer, a humble civil engineer and a humble public servant, and also a consultant in the private sector, and as a law-abiding citizen. I am now a law-abiding citizen and authority-respecting citizen also, irrespective of the whatever position I hold in public office. What I hold in public office is important, but what is more important to me is my reputation, my character. Because the office doesn't make me good. I have to be good within me to make the office good to lift the standard high. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I like to urge all those who understand the truth to be responsible. I've not done any, I've not abused the office that I've been responsible in any capital I've been in various governments. I've never mismanaged the people's money. I've never misused tax first funds even my electorate or anywhere else where I was put responsible for. And please do not criminalize or accuse me for only want of political experience. It's not good. It's not good. That's not the right way. You don't try to destroy a good man to uh, gratify yourself. That's not the way to do things. Let's, let's be normal and be simple. What are we looking for will come if you are normal and be simple. Look at the evidence. I'm not one that is in there. Honourable Member, we have a point of order. Honourable Member of Van Mugri. Mr. Speaker, the uh, good mem uh, Minister for Higher Education has rightfully said that matter is sub subjudice. That explanation can be reserved when the matter is before the court and yes, to be answerable to the courts. Not here. Parliament is not a courthouse. So he should, uh, 
reserve that. When his time comes in court, he can go and explain to the courts. Thank you. Honorable uh, member, your point of order is in order. I will allow the mem uh, honorable minister, I think I've seen from his explanation, he's trying to inform the public of how they're using social media and other media stream to tennis individual members' reputation. And I've seen the statement is in regard on that, but to explain himself on what matter involved in allegate, it's, it's the matter of court to explain. So, Honorable Member, refrain from explaining yourself of what you're going to present to court and inform the country of what they're using uh, media statement and your, your explanation can be on behalf of all us, Honorable Members of the House, that those people out there must be careful on what they're doing in tennising the good Honorable Leaders of this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What's the me talking? Me no stop law court. I'm not party to it. I'm not there. I mean, not call a court to make him to me no stop law is something irrelevant, but don't money calling me nothing. So me to talk this way. Now, finally, me talk all same. Me no explain him court. Me talk all same law. Finally, now me look him name long Prime Minister Marabito come up. Me look him. But look him one blood this thing when nation court even make him. When I've been clearing Prime Minister too. I'm clearing penis. But still me look him all money like long. But every man were caught in yet declaring penis. No, this is all case here. That's the truth. That's a fact. Honorable Minister. Honorable, uh, honorable uh, member, your point of order is in order. Honorable Minister, I've ex explained earlier, I, I want you to uh, mention something in what I've uh, uh, made statement of earlier. I think, Speaker, I'll conclude now. I just heard that let's not spread false rumor just because we would like to gain some political gain. What I'm saying is some of us, we are not in that. We are not in the court. We are completely irrelevant to all these things you are saying. Please, so do not use the, uh, the, the social media for politics because you just want to destroy somebody. Some of us, we love our reputation. We like to build... Our character, we like to remain there. Please don't destroy us when we don't deserve to be destroyed. Thank you, Mr. Good Speaker. The Honorable, uh, it's grievance debate, so I've, I've been receiving this for Governor for Oro. So, Honorable, Honorable uh, Governor for Oro. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. My uh, grievance debate, I have three particular subjects that I would like to talk about. Uh, one is on the issue of taxation, the other is on the issue of the LLG elections, and the, other, and the final subject matter is on the issue of transnational crimes, especially the rise of the importation, production, distribution of illicit drugs. Uh, firstly, Mr. Aston Speaker, my concerns in regards to taxation are about a recent decision made to do away with the dependence tax rebates. And I believe that uh, this has been placed on hold by the IRC. It appears on their website that they have placed the implementation of this decision on hold. And this is commendable. But I believe uh, that there are already organizations, including possibly government departments, that are already implementing this situation or the prevention of employees from claiming tax rebates, their dependent rebates. This is causing a significant amount of misery to a segment of our population, those who are making an effort to at least claim these rebates and get some relief from the rising cost of goods and services that they are all facing, we are all facing. So I would like to urge our government to seriously consider reversing this decision allow taxpayers to claim dependent rebates. It's about 200, 300 kina per fortnight for many of these taxpayers. And while that might not be an amount of money that's of any significance to some of us here, for those in the higher income bracket, it is significant to those who have to forego that amount of money every fortnight. So I'd like to urge the government to consider Reversing this decision. Honorable uh, provincial member for we have a point of order from opposition leader. Sorry. 
I think uh, there was something in the papers that uh, there's no rebate there. You know, two or three hundred kina. It's sixty-four kina. Uh, so if my good governor can uh, look at that and uh, correct himself that it's sixty-four kina, not three hundred or two hundred kina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, Opposition Leader, your point of order is in order. And I think the Honorable Governor is making statement on his debate upon what information he have collected and have. So I'll allow him to present what he have to this House. It depends, actually, Mr. Aston Speaker, on exactly how much income is being earned by the taxpayer. So it's not specifically 65 kin, although I'm glad to see that the opposition leader is keeping himself informed of tax laws in our country. That's good. Uh, do more studies there, please. <laughs> so my, my point here is that let's do away with this. We cannot cause misery to our people. We have put the threshold for taxpayers up to about 20,000, and that's great. But then we have allowed this, or we have removed the rebates, which is not so great. And this will cause not only misery, but it causes concern out there. So let's also clarify that. And if it's already happening, then inform the companies, the government departments that are doing it to immediately stop. Also, I'd like to say that um, in October 2015, after two years of work and almost 100 submissions made by stakeholders, the Tax Review Committee tabled its report to the government with 91 recommendations. I think the government of that time had sanctioned this report, paid some money for the Tax Review Committee to carry out its work, and the report remains yet to be attended to. I would urge our government to do this immediately. This will provide some tax relief to taxpayers, legitimate taxpayers. And here I want to make a side note. I'd like us to consider going after those taxpayers who are not paying their taxes. And there are quite a number of them in this country operating in our fisheries industry, operating in our logging industry, and various other areas who are not paying their taxes. We are not vigorously pursuing these bad taxpayers. What we are doing is hammering those who are already paying their taxes. And we have to stop doing this. We have to make a concerted effort to look at what is called the black economy. And Prime Minister, I remember, Mr. Speaker, sorry, Assistant Speaker, Acting Speaker, my apologies. I remember that this government, the previous government, the government before that, spoke on many occasions about attending to what is known as the black economy. But no one has actually made an effort to do anything about this. The black economy is a significant chunk of our economy which are not paying their taxes, which are operating in this country as free riders. And we are allowing them to do as they please. And they are investing and they are thriving and growing their businesses, even funneling their funds offshore. And nothing has been done about these bad taxpayers. But we keep hammering those who are making the effort to pay taxes. So this government needs to make a significant effort to actually take the bull by the horns and tackle this segment of our taxpaying population who are actually avoiding taxes, who are free riders in this country. And they can start by taking a look at the recommendations made by the Tax Review Committee. In those recommendations, I believe there were some suggestions that we should lower the tax rates, which are the highest in the region, the tax rates that are imposed on our taxpayers company tax, withholding tax, pay-as-you-earn tax. We pay the highest taxes in the region. We're yet we're supposed to be an extremely wealthy country if you look at our resources. So that's on the subject of taxation. On the subject of LLG elections, uh, I differ from the views of my colleague, Governor, uh, and I respect his views. But for us, in our province, the Assembly, the PEC, the people we consulted, they opted for council presidents to be voted in by their people, rather than by councillors. We prefer that option. And in fact, I believe that at the last governor's conference in Morabe, it was decided that provinces should decide whether they want to opt for allowing councillors to vote for council presidents or whether the people would vote for council presidents. And so some provinces would prefer that councillors vote.
council presidents. And that's fine. They have their reasons which are, you know, peculiar to them, and we appreciate and respect that. But those of us who feel that the people ought to vote their council presidents, we ought to be given that opportunity as well. And we should not consider cost. I understand the minister's concerns about that, and he has valid concerns, but if we are a government for the people, of the people, by the people, we should listen to the people. And in this instance, if a people in a particular province, say for instance our province, decide that they would like to elect their council presidents, then we should allow for that. In regards to my final subject, it's to do with transnational crimes, but in particular the rise of what we would call hard drugs, drugs such as heroin, cocaine, opium, and methadone, methamphetamines, fentanyl, and a frightening new drug that's emerging in the Western countries called Trank, animal tranquilizer. Very addictive, very cheap. And it's finding its way into the Pacific. It's already here on the streets of Port Mosby. In fact, there have been instances where policemen, public servants, have been caught using these drugs, these hard drugs. This is a frightening development. When I was a law enforcement officer and we were combating the rise of transnational crimes, we started to see the emergence of transnational criminal cartels. Papua New Guinea was just a transit point. Today, Papua New Guinea is also a production point. This is frightening. In the past, what we observed were cartels were flying in what they call cooks to cook the drugs in the province, or sorry, in the country, before exporting them on log ships, on yachts, and other small craft. Now they have their own cooks trained here to do that, and they're operating here, and they're thriving. And then their, legit their illegal funds are converted into legitimate monies. They're buying property, developing gated communities, running legitimate businesses like restaurants. You'd be surprised. But this is already happening here. Now, if this cheap drug hits the streets and it's accessible to our youth, our growing youth bulge, who are restless, unoccupied, if we don't do anything about them, they will become a serious concern for us. If these drugs become accessible to them, we will have serious problems. I remember as Director for Intelligence, I wrote many assessments to the government of the day about this emerging problem. This was in 2008 we started to see what was happening. It's happening now. And I feel that we need to take serious stock of this situation and address it with the severity that it needs. And the recommendation I would like to make out of this is that the police need to be empowered to develop the capacity that it needs to address this growing issue. We established what we call the Transnational Crimes Investigation Unit in 2006. It was established by the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary, the Papua New Guinea Customs, and the Australian Federal Police. That organization has been left to basically deteriorate to a point where it is no longer functioning. Honorable Governor, your 10 minutes of debate has lapsed. Thank you very much. Uh, the Honorable uh, Provincial Member of uh, ECP. Thank you for that uh, clarification, eh? Mr. Acting Speaker. Uh, I just want to say how thankful I am that the question, one question I asked the Prime Minister on employment made him uncomfortable. I think we are too comfortable in this house. We've been comfortable for a long time. And our people are feeling the impact of our lackadaisical comfort. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to come here on this side, Mr. Acting Speaker. Because inside government, you can't really talk like this. And I, I feel so sorry for my brother, the governor of uh, Oro. Because I, I sat with him for, for for five years while he complained, and he's still complaining. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing. Uh, Honorable uh, 
Remember what your point about the Prime Minister? I appreciate the, uh, the uh, regional member feeling sorry for governor on the other side, but uh, needless to feel sorry for another leader, you know, all, you all equ equivalence. And he should know among, he's the last person to, know, to re re rebut that on this side we don't encourage debate and conversations. Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, Provincial Member, I will ask you to uh, continue on from what you have said earlier and take note of what the Prime Minister have said. No effect again. Uh, but anyway, we are doing many no effect uh, interjections on the floor. In any case, you see, I hear a lot of ministers lament the fact that why aren't we like Singapore, Mr. Harry Mogaratai? Well, there's a simple reason. And that reason is we don't report on the same things that Singapore does. We don't report on job statistics on the floor. This is the first time in six years I've been a member of parliament that a prime minister has reported job statistics. Do we wonder why we don't perform? And the interesting thing is, there's a number you've looked at Paitim Han Long Emir. And I'm going to double check these figures with the Employers Federation after this, because that's the job of a responsible opposition. We have to keep you in check. You know why, Mr. Acting Speaker, that side of the House is going to spend more than 28 billion kina of public funds this year. Uh, sorry, 26 billion. That's going to be spent by that side of the House. The front bench of government is going to spend that much money for or in the name of our people. And it's our job to make sure that you account for every single toy you spend. That's our job. That's our job. But more than that, if you want to be like Singapore, then you have to bring reports to the floor like Singapore. No can talk talk nothing. Honorable provincial member, I have the uh, member for uh, Okapa have a point of order. Uh, point of the order, Mr. Speaker, some uh, governor make him good blood talk talk, but it's a little money come, you don't have the side that's all by using this money. Your position too by using this money. So correct him with a statement, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, so was, uh, I'm Harim Good. Me cut him come back lot 26 because total budget them 27 billion. So no good me blood by using 26 lot, uh, 1 billion lot people blow me blood and a bulk by Stalon. I can actually bring, I can go honorable, to the budget honorable, books and bring the correct Honorable number. provincial Tuesday, member, July. honorable governor, July. honorable governor. So sorry you feel bad, but... Uh, honorable governor, I receive your seat. Yeah. Uh, honorable member, uh, governor. It is the chair who will make the ruling on the point of order, not you to make a ruling on the point of order. So, Honorable uh, Governor, you will take note from what the uh, member have said, and I will ask you to continue. You only have six minutes left. I mean, because all man feeling pain, I interject close to, close, to, close to now. You're right. Way blong him. But in any case, from the numbers we received, only 100,000 jobs were created in the last five years. I'm just under the soul, me look him low. One of something. Prime Minister, I give him. Behind you, giving me paper now. Me to plug and talk talk. But the, but the point is, the point is, the point is, Mr. Acting Speaker, people blow Papua New Guinea, he like Sabe. What are we doing with their money? If we are creating jobs, where are they? Like, I saw the forestry job numbers go up, but I know for a fact that we increased taxes on logging by 70%. I know because I sat on that side of the house and we did that. And I know that a lot of forestry companies shut down. So I'm a bit skeptical on some of these numbers, but anyway, we'll verify them next week. The point is, if we want to be like Singapore, we should adopt some of the Singaporean practices. Yeah. Like number one, we should have a very strong front bench. And that front bench should be performing. That front bench should be reporting, not just on the floor for the benefit of the opposition, but for the benefit of the people of Papua New Guinea. Yeah, yeah. If you are going to be spending significant funds and say that hey, people, are blow, people blow Papua New Guinea, don't just come and report on roads and bridges and things like that which we all welcome, 
but report also on the growth in the economy, report also on the inflation numbers. Come now, talk to lawyers so people in Papua New Guinea can understand why no local appealing pen. They want to know. And that is where we are failing. There is no dashboard report that the government can come and present in this house that shows how the country is performing. We don't have a dashboard report, Mr. Acting Speaker. And why shouldn't we? This is the modern world. We should have things like that. We want to be like Rwanda, we talk about it. We want to be like Singapore. Well, when are we going to adopt the practices that make countries like that the way they are, rather than Yumi Tok Tasot? Because again, the energy of the, for the development of this country is directed by the front bench of government. 38 ministers determine where this country goes. The rest of us, whether you like it or not, you are told to go back. Mibla giving you 20 million. Mibla giving you 10 million. You pass him out. No go work. Lo district lo you. No can come na complain lawyer. No can talk to lo big lo money blo government and blo government like blo mibla. That is our current cultural practice. So should anyone be surprised that we are not like Singapore? That we wish to be like them, but we're not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because our very practices are cargo cultists. Oh, you blow civic should one bell because 340 million and me kissing and give him you pla. That's all you may lose the thing or same. One pla vote, he's going to make him you come a prime minister and you give him something where rightfully belongs to the people of East Civic because we work for it. We tend to have short memories and we tend to think that something here blow me, me, papa blow something. Hold on a minute. Consolidated revenue funds belong to every single Papua New Guinean. They are entitled. This is what's wrong with our country. This is what's wrong with our country. Because time you me hold him, but you gonna talk, hey, classroom here and me make him. No, 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 no. Money blow people blow Papua New Guinea make him. You know you make him. You are just a custodian. No can make those you owner. We need a change in the thinking of the leaders of this country where me, Papa, and I look at you, blogger. No, God, you know, Papa, you custodian. There's like I'm passing, blow me, you make him now. We wonder why our country is all over the place. We wonder why there is no investor confidence. Because they see how we perform here, they see our lack of reporting, they see our lack of a dashboard where investors can come down, look, look, now all can gauge him or say, is Papua New Guinea an attractive investment destination or not? If I come and invest $10 billion, will I be able to take my profits out or not? If they are going to lock up all the foreign exchange and there is a backlog of foreign exchange orders, how do I get my profits out? Well, maybe I shouldn't bring my $10 billion and invest it in this country. Maybe I should take it to another country. These are the things that we discuss in government WhatsApp and nothing happens. We're going to have a grievance debate today and many good ideas are going to come from the members of this honorable house. I don't see anyone taking notes. I don't see anyone coming back and saying to the relevant minister, well, this is the concern of member for such and such. Now, Inab, you may go and make him sample something so that behind him can come back and talk to the member or say, yes, government, you take note. Now, we are implementing some actions towards resolving the concern of the member for such and such. We haven't seen that. Now, I'm not saying it's the fault of the current government. I'm just saying that it's a cultural problem that we need to fix. If we want our country, if we want our people to raise their standards, if we want our people to do better, if we want them to come and start working, so that you mean by taxi mall, now you seem tax law, lo go back, now halavi mall, then perhaps the standard needs to rise right here. Perhaps the standard should be that, well, first of all, let's follow the law. If we pass a law in this house, then we should be la the last people to break it, like some of the questions we've asked during the week. Honorable mem uh, provincial member for Thank you, ACP, your Mr. Acting 10 minutes Speaker. have lapsed. Uh, honorable, honorable members, uh, I'd like to interrupt the parliament to do a small explanation 
to the House. Honourable members, please resume your house. As of today and on, the Chair will recognise you all governors. I will address you as provincial members per the National Gadget that all governors elected are the provincial members. The Chair will recognise and name, I call you and everybody we have to call all our governors as provincial members. The governor is only the governor for NCD. He will be called governor. And the regional member will be only called to the regional member for Bougainville. And all provincial member must be addressed as the provincial member of respective provinces. A member for Jimmy, the honorable member for Jimmy. Just like Sarim, Sambalalik Nik Ting Ting Blomi, thank you, Long. You blow all that I stop, no, you make and say one time. No, Lik Nik Ting Ting Blomi and me, me just like Sawe or Sam, Nubla Word or Word Consola, the Nubla LLG, all process, stop me play again, Sawe Nik Nik, or Sam, me Paul Nik Nik, Plenty or Consol Word, Sam. All Brugim 500, all Brugim 600, population you go two, three, and I'm making plenty all words. So maybe, you know, Sawe, you mean must Brugim all 3,000, 4,000, or make him two blow words, or and me just cut lick lick ting ting. Now, Nubla LLG, and all some requirements, na process that I must come, na by come come up long in him, me just uh, think him good ball, or you miss Sawe. Me yet me no clear plenty time em. Me bla make me come na em come stuck lo provincial na em no come down lo here na kai no sem so. Me just share him this plan. Me no think they got need lo work him common role lo LLG election. Em also you me have him national election just recently na common role you me update him finish. You no got need long. Only work him again. Plenty mess he come up. Plenty resource he wasted. That same public servant can conduct him the council election per word by word long. One one electorate blow you me and by good plat through. This is the kind of money you me can spend him also and by help him. All candidates also meet in a good plat long. Every election you me must get some plat leak leak. Send this also. Some plat all come up two or three term council maybe only qualify or come up president. Now, some people are president, they stop two platem, or kind of them, or must qualify, or come up deputy governor. Some people are kind of them, process, or prejudicial, you must put them in place. Now, only can be any, now you can improve legally. Because kind of them, all council candidate, law one one word, and you have now all grade 10 livers, all grade 8 livers, all grade 12 livers, all drug line 2 staff, all house line staff, big plat competition. So, because you may put them, some people are kind of them, legally requirement. You know, you know, pulling drug, you know, uh, make him travel. Kind of same, you fit, lo qualify, lo sign up. Na kind of same, meeting him by improving the youths as well as him by bring him on good luck. The council has come in. They must say me, say him think, think, that's all. Um, biometric meeting, he got uh, at least uh, election after election, you must improve league league now. You should. Uh, system, you must send him legally now. Help him more council election more easy. Help him national election more easy. And um, by nice to mass. So maybe you mean already lo council election? Okay, you may get ready long national election. Or oh, eight plus election that um, by all line or same all this. You mean now. Some people you lose lo court now. No same. You may get try him lo using biometric now. At least send him style of voting lick lick now and by help him law find him some blow good plan man law come inside. Also lick lick uh, five minutes sharing blow meter soul. Also me feel him um, it's about time and um, some some blow system you must improve him from the bottom up or from the top down or kind of same law make him a better system and a better way of doing things into the future. Thank you. Honourable Member for Vani Green. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. Me too, like, since the time, 
walking debate. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, we got a uh, serious concern for uh, security in the middle country, uh, law and order situation in the middle country. Uh, Men in the border of the middle country. Mr. Acting Speaker, me debate plenty of time peninsula display. But government after government have not taken serious concerns, especially on the border, on the law and order issue in the country, and some inaction and, uh, and also irresponsibility by the government. Firstly, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, I like a debate on the issue of border of the Western Province and the West Pacific Province. Mr. Acting Speaker, I like him, uh, Minister of Defense, Minister of Police, and of course, uh, Prime Minister, he can take note of some very important uh, debate issue by, me by racing. Mr. Acting Speaker, no one anymore, no wooden border. All soldiers will come up with them, all immigration officers, quarantine officers. Check him, all citizens will go come. I mean, a work will all soldiers make him this work. One report they come to me, and one citizen will me. I mean, like, carry him gold, will go trade in Indonesia, and all soldiers will him gold. Large amount of gold, worth about 400,000 kina. Now, soldier Kisimna, they have not to date returned it back to the owner of the gold. This is very serious. The soldier's job on the border is to patrol the border between Western Province and West Pacific along the border between Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, not becoming immigration officers and quarantine officers. Mr. Acting Speaker, this post plus soldier long Wutong must be removed. Soldiers must be mobile. They must be patrolling the borders. There's a lot of illegal trade, transnational crime. Plenty of men who will come inside the country illegally because our borders are not properly manned. And probably because our Soldiers and the police who are doing their job on the border are not properly funded by the government. We have literally compromised the security of our nation, Mr. Acting Speaker. This is a very serious issue. We are not a country if we do not give prominence to the security of our nation. And then I'm seeing some posts in social media of soldiers performing duties up in the islands, standing and walking around those so-called warlords who are also harmed. Where are we heading to? Where is our country heading to, Mr. Acting Speaker? I'm seeing also posts of soldiers having an affair with women and then taking shots a woman is holding the gun. We need serious attention. There is a total breakdown in discipline in our forces. And while I'm on that, Mr. Acting Speaker, the Defense Force cannot be run by an acting commander for such a long time. What has happened to the suspension of the commander of the Defense Force? Where is the report on the Cupiano incident? There was a training that went wrong. There was an investigation conducted, or a general inquiry that was conducted. But it has not been tabled on the floor of parliament, and the commander is still under suspension. The commander in any army in the world cannot, the army in any country in the world cannot be run by an acting commander for that long. They must be a permanent commander. If you allow that, there will be breakdown in discipline. There will be breakdown in discipline. I want to know when the government is going to table that 
report on the Kupiano incident, when the issue on the suspension of the commander is going to be addressed. And when the Black Wednesday happened, we suspended three prominent government officers, including the police commissioner. But within 14 days, the police commissioner was reinstated. Two issues. One, two people died in a training that went wrong. One, a mayhem in the city, more than 20 people died. And then we reinstated the police commissioner. That fast. That fast. <coughs> Is there some biasness going on in our leadership in the country? <coughs> Prime Minister, your point of order. Uh, with respect to uh, the member for one word wins uh, uh, statement, a good statement he's making, but uh, it's an assessment of biasness. I think uh, NSAID should remove this one. Uh, in every matter, there's the case merits of every matter. And, uh, this parliament uh, has not yet been presented with facts on the uh, general uh, board of inquiry into the defense matter. In fact, uh, it has been concluded as we speak. But on the police commission's matter, let, let it be on, uh, on the handset. And he was on leave. The acting commissioner at the time is still suspended as we speak. So I just want to put that correct. The acting commissioner at the time who was acting when the uh, uh, ugly events of January 10th happened. He's still on suspension as we speak. The uh, investigation are certain that the commissioner was out of office. That's why he was restored back in 14 days. And, uh, I'll be making further announcements on this in due course, but uh, I just thought uh, it was a point of order. Let's make, not make assertions of biasness in the public space. Our people are watching, everyone is watching. We speak on matters of substance without making inferences and assertions. Right, Mr. Ayopono, for I should order. I'll ask the member to continue on your... Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. What I'm basically saying is that you have on one end, commander that has been, suspend, has been on suspension for too long. We cannot allow a defense force in any country to be run by acting commander. And on the other end, we have a police commissioner that was suspended, and in no time he was reinstated. What is the practice? Mr. Acting Speaker, and more than that, more than that, in the Defense Force, the department is supposed to be a support element. But the Defense Force Department has grown into a white elephant. A white elephant. No wonder why soldiers are not having food in their messes. No wonder why soldiers do not have uniforms. Because the money is spent on the Department of Defense, which has become a white elephant. Soldiers laid a complaint of misappropriation, irregularities, and corruption within the Department of Defense against the Department of Defense and the Secretary of Defense, and nothing has been done. The complaint was laid last year. Nothing has been done. This is an important security element. This is the last line of defense of our country. We cannot allow the Department of Defense to grow more than the Defense Force itself, the uniform personnel. The Secretary cannot encroach into the command and control of the uniform personnel. The uniform personnel uh, uh, come under the command and control of the Commander in Chief, the Commander of the Defense Force. Same applies to the Police Force. And while I'm talking about the police force, Mr. Acting Speaker, I hear uh, the investigation team that was involved in an investigation of one of our uh, members of parliament has been disbanded, and most of them have been suspended. For what? Are you telling me that we are already encroaching into the systems of government and politics is interfering into the systems of government. Honorable member, I think your time for debate has lapsed. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The provincial member for
East New Bri uh, West New Britain. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Uh, before my uh, grievance debate, uh, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my people of West New Britain, I extend my sincere condolences to the family and people of uh, Medang, mainly the Usinabundi uh, uh, people, for the untimely demise of our late Honorable Minister Jimmy Uguru. Mr. Acting Speaker, thank you for uh, recognizing me. As me like Tok Tok Lik Lo, this amendment, Lo Constitution, Lo Papua New Guinea, Lo Amendi Molsham, you may declare him PNG as a Christian country. Now you may adapt him this la Christian values and principles. Me congratulate him, uh, uh, Attorney General Blayumi, lo pass him this la important law, and uh, make him this la important amendment. Now to lo make him this la amendment, lo court system Blayumi, lo give him uh, clear separation as national court and appeal court and supreme court. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, lo side lo lo tu. Mr. Acting Speaker, me born as a Hindu. Mr. Acting Speaker, you know also you may choose him religion, lo you may. And you born lo one family, you by be him this la one him lotu and papa and mama am school him you. One him algata lotu me also am thinking also algata lotu also am plenty rivers. Algata rivers have a run a pull down la one plus salwar at the soul. Kind also am lotu too am plenty lotu stop. I'm also am plenty water river. And pull down one plus alwara and plenty lotu and pull him mimi go lo one plus destination tasul. You may call him big man, na? God. God em, doesn't require our recognition to exist. Does he require our recognition to exist? And we no need him. Recognition blow you me. If you ask me if this religion is important, yes, of course it gives as a guiding principle for our people. I stay through through me you know, like uh, support him because I'm decision blow also I'm Catholic diocese na this la na me check him bishop Aram I'm talk also I'm all professionals all work him this la decision. But then me look him also I'm people blow you me I'm also I'm overwhelmingly support him also I'm over 96 person MCLRC report I'm talk also. Suppose I'm wish blow people we are here to express their wish. You know lo come lo give him personal opinion blow you me laws to what is best so as long as as long as acting speaker people believe me can be in him this like christian values and principles suppose you me talk through through also me be in him this love principles na values me no think the way we behaved yesterday you mean by behavior of this honorable house too it's not about how many verses of bible you know mr acting speaker but it is what you can actually follow even if you follow one verse of Bible, then you are a true Christian. But I think, Speaker, me shall look in plenty months have come now. I'll just talk with him. Matthew chapter 16 verses, you know, 2 to 3, I'm talking with him, with him, with him. Whether I'm true, true, this number exists, no God, me no save too. <laughs> Mr. Acting Speaker, that's the truth. Also, I come now, talk, talk, now I'll get the innocent people. I'll buy things with him, you, true, plus man, you, man, you, you, also, one, plus godly man. Now I'll buy believe him, you. Even the side law election too, also I call him this law, name law, one name, big man, I ask him vote. Then all by thing also, you, through through, lotu man, all by give him vote. And you may work, take him advantage, lo this law, innocent mind blow, people blow, you me, Mr. Acting Speaker. As I said, Mr. Acting Speaker, I'm religion, I'm, you know, also by a choice, maybe after you grow after 18, you kiss him plenty survey, then you can decide. But time you born, and Papa and Mama, one am lotu, I'll be any, you may be any, to solve this lotu. And big man, Savelo, one am something, and me best lo you. You born lo this part of the world, okay, you kiss him this lo something. As long as you can follow your religion faithfully, then you by reach him this lo same destination. Where you may talk also, there is only one creator. There cannot be more than one creator. There cannot be more than one God. As long as everyone follow faithfully. Natu. Mr. Acting Speaker, today I'm also saying, world, people are dying in the name of religion. Big man, you know, talk low, you mean by fight in the name of religion. You know, also one plus religion and big plus moral and another religion. You know, also one plus religion, talk, suppose, you know, be any, this level, lotu belong all. Then I'm all right, lo, kill him all, another plus line. 
बिग मन एम क्रिएट मी मी अलगता सेम टाइम यू किसी यू किसी मन प्ला कट ब्लूटी कप साइट एम बाय रेड कलर या ब्लू मी तेम रेड कलर ब्लू मी बाय वन एम ब्लू कलर टाइम यू क्राई ना आई वर अ ब्लू यू यू टेस्टी मैम सॉल्टी है ब्लू मी तू बाय सॉल्टी मिस एक्टिंग स्पीकर फॉर मी द रिलीजन इज सिंपल डूइंग गुड इज माई रिलीजन इफ आई डू गुड आई फील गुड इफ आई डू बैड देन आई फील बैड इट इज एज सिंपल एज दैट we cannot take advantage of you know the innocent minds of people in the name of religion but to help them with a guiding light yes every religion is important and png being a majority as christian followers it's it's great if people can follow even one principle of christianity this country will be a changed country this country will be you know changing in terms of attitude Mr. Acting Speaker, being born as a human being itself is a blessing. But when you're born as a human being, you've got four plus pecato. Our senses are imperfect. Being born as a human being, we are sure to commit mistake, and we are sure to become illusioned, and we have a propensity, a tendency to cheat. This one is unavoidable. When you born as human being, there is no one is perfect. Acting speaker, I'm British. I'm ruling India for close to over 300 years. All the converted Malgata, this la billion people low, converted me low to belong all na. You know, come up. Of course, still population low. All na people low to I'm still substantial na stuff. System where all adapting, all same traditional system, all same PNG too. Before low to come, you got system too stuff yeah. This la system I'm sustaining this la country too. Of course, low to come I'm uniting you me because you me stuff all same divided all same. Tribes, na clans, na kind kind, all some division stuff. So Christianity come na and give him opportunity to unite him. This la eight uh, hundred tribes and clans and language, different language people. Side lo, all some suppose me talk talk lo me strictly ban him lo tu blo me. Lo tu blo me got four pla strong pla principles. Number one, you no can kai kai meat, no can kill him one pla something na you kai kai. Number two, no alcohol or no intoxicants. Number three, no illicit sex. You know, sex outside of marriage. Number four, no gambling. That's all. Emi, lo tu emi tak tak kolsem. Suppose you ask him, algata man, you know, kai kai meat, no gat. Algata man, plenty man kai kai. It's only a very minority population. So principles emi available, but whether you mean like behind him, this la all principles where. Traditionally, M ancestors blow you me set him up. M question mark. Religion M, you me got plenty. Religion, but spirituality is one. The acting speaker M, time close to finish, but me like give him one little little story. Watch me run fast the soul. Now me finish him this la. Little little debate blow me. Mr. Acting speaker, he got one plus. Past I am also am. One plus strong plus lot to man I am behind him. I am sure all get the verses from the Bible too. I am strong plus past I am me also am. Stop close to true lot big man. So village I am stop long I am close to. I got one plus trap plus dam. I got water plenty water I am stop na this lot time I am dam I am brook. Dam brook na big plus water work plus capsite na come inside lot place long I am. Na time water I am also am dam water I brook na I come. Some plus line come lot car na. Taki pasta ulse mi kalap lo dis lakar na mi pla piki mi na rescue mi. Taso al pasta ta ulse mi big pla lo tu man na mi savelo big man na big man yet by kam na saving mi. So I'm rushing dis lakar. Now where I come inside, I'm going inside the house. I'm pasta ulse swim inside the house. Now one pla lig lig banana boat kam lo I blow house plong em na I'm al ta ulse mi kalap lo dis lakar banana boat. Em pasti tak tak lo same, tak tak kalau same, em isave, em big blah lo tu mana, em big mana edby rescue em, em rausin dis labor tu. Now where I go antap na, pasti go senap, kalap antap lo roof lo house pelangem na em isenap antap lo house. Na em senap lo roof na em all helikopter kam na terma Europe na em i refuse tu lo dis la, apa lo rescue em. Of course em pasti em pull down lo warna na em dry na em die, em drown na em die. So I'm good plus pastor, so I'm got opportunity to go to heaven. So I'm go to heaven, a big man work to receiving one one man. I'm pastor, turn plus pastor come, a pastor I'm chorus no good through. Pastor I'm chorus also, I'm asking big man also, 
mi wak lo promoti miu na praise miu ta soliu na kam na rescue mi tem cross lo big man so big man tu wak lo confuse ol sem wai na pasta koro sem ta kol sem big man ta kim pasta ol sem pasta mi selim triple time mi kam lo rescue miu mi selim kari kam na you refuse mi selim boti kam you refuse you mi selim helicopter kam na you refuse mr acting speaker the messages big man em stop lo hard lo imi algata you know also me met by kam na rescue mi mi so you me must respect him also big man em me sit down inside lo hard lo one one sit down lo here na sit down lang up em me stop inside lo dark peak algata up to so then you me must respect him this la entire creation thank you acting speaker thank you the honorable member for pomio uh, thank you mr acting speaker Uh, firstly, Romaki people of Pomi, me salim tok sorry golo the late education minister, member blowing me logosin pundi. People tok sorry na le pray long big man again give belly silo and them soul blend. Just want to contribute to this grievance uh, debate with a few observations. Uh, firstly, uh, the governor for although a provincial member with the governor for East Sibik said something about comparing us with Singapore. Uh, Singapore had a consistent prime minister for over for for 30, 39 for 30, 31 years. Uh, since 19, 1959 to 1990, Lee Kuan Yew was the prime minister of Singapore. Ono senesim. Compared to Papua New Guinea, he was the prime minister close to close to us. So Lo Yumi, he is now 49 years now. 49 years now. So 49 years now. Na. Ah, uh, let me say, we must prime minister now. I think eight law, nine law, something also. But let me acknowledge him, the former prime minister, let me tell you, current chief. I think he was let me stop long long time neglect. That's the time me. He has the place the 2015 division and then PNC MTDP 2010 to 2030, and then there were other million to development plans stop inside. Uh, my observation is after 2017 elections. We are the MTDP number three, medium term development plan number three. Now, as in the blood, this law, I'm not covering years 2018 to 2022. The aim is securing our future through inclusive, sustainable, and economic growth. We got nine but key result areas. The first one talked about improving or growing the economy. There you go. And then, One year later, after the MTD plan was introduced, government said this, 2019, 2020. Last year, 2023, Nubla government can come Nubla Nubla plan now. We call him MTD before. So immediately, MTD before cover him the years 2023 to 2027. Just only one year after implementing this particular plan. Now, let me clear straight. It gives us. 12 strategic priority areas, 12 last step inside. The first one also talked about growing the economy to increase the current economy to 200 billion by 2030 to step inside. <coughs> And our targets are in place. Now, he got all specific targets related to SPAs, let me stop clear. I've read this, I think that's a very, that's an important document that we need to align ourselves with. From the LLG, single district, single province, Your agencies, I think the plan is very, very clear. I'm not talking to the Prime Minister and the team, but making me also chairman of PAC. We know that this year we allocated 27 billion kilo of budget, and my committee will be establishing some key monitoring systems to make sure that the funding allocated to things like, like agencies like the PHS, the Bank of Health, even the Connect PNG, and every funding that's going through will be monitored properly, so we achieve the targets for MTD before. That's our plan at the moment. So we'll talk about them. And just the first year after implementation of the MTD before, and, and we're talking about, you know, we are again coming, trying to you know change the government again. Uh, Singapore did what they did was they they were they continued. That was that was a, that's a government that was established and they maintained the prime minister for some time. So I'm thinking about with us all. Now, my my grievance debate today is is uh, we are given the chance. Here we are. If the, uh, the Prime Minister, the Mara Barroso government needs to be assessed on their performance, uh, they just give the assessments in 2026, 2027. And total problem is double same. So we have a plan that's guiding us 
aligned to MTD before. I mean, MTD before, that's already aligned with STDB, STDB 2030 and 20th Division, aligned to Constitution, and I believe we are on the right track. And if we can uh, all combine together to uh, bring in good discussions, I believe we can uh, bring our country to a better position. Uh, first, Dr. Blomi. A second one, I'm, uh, I was, second point, Blomi. Uh, I was in my district uh, last week, and I was presented with a, a petition uh, from my, uh, from uh, PAV owners. Talk to Blomi, I'm talking about some plenty of crime story, or crime story committee. I've come along all Pekini, under the age of 18 years, who are taking advantage of the Juvenile Act of 2014. So, plant will begin now causing trouble in the country today. And we stop and need late slow 12 years, 13 years, 14 years, 10 years go around. I go on top. The Thai police arrest them all, only Pani had arrest them all too. They cannot be able to, to, to formally lay proper charges on this particular age group because only stop and need long, Juvenile Act of 2018. So, all of them give them to talk to them, they will bring them to the cabman. Now, look at the section so that the police will look so good and arrest them all, so long. So that they always go with this problem, so that, so that they are formally charged as an adult. And these are the people who are now causing trouble. Tomorrow, police arrest them all, carry them all go to cell, lock them all up. And then next week, there's the same people, all carry them coming and making trouble again. As I speak today, my LLC at Sinevit had a bigger problem through this lab. And it's caused by the same old, old, old Sumatin, old, old Yambon Manaki. So uh, it's something that we need to really uh, address as a government. Uh, looking at the juvenile elect of 2014, if uh, we can make some amendment to reduce that age factor from maybe 18 or stop lot 12 or color 14, I mean, you can ask the uh, government to look at this, this last site. So I'm, I'm number two point. Number three, I was in Vanimo three weeks ago. I uh, had the chance of going to Indonesia, a uh, meeting with a uh, uh, consul general of, of Papua New Guinea to Chayapura, uh, His Excellency uh, George Weary. Now, the today, me support him. He may need to improve my border security, blow him along, border. It's very, very important that we need to improve our, our, uh, our border security in the particular area. I don't know side, they are well organized. Uh, you see, you're processing all the uh, passports through electronic system. I was taking too long, and we are still manually filling the visa forms. All, and it's just electronically done, and, and it's just processed. On the other side, they are prepared to uh, implement, uh, support the support team, uh, the, you know, the Connect PNG. They have also established some uh, public transport terminals on the other side, and this is waiting for us to establish on our, on our side, and they can support us to also grow our economy. So we support the Tok uh, the Mayor of Vanimo Green. Uh, we need to look at the area and establish and improve the security systems at Sko Thank you, Acting Speaker. The Honorable Opposition Leader. Uh, Deputy Acting Speaker, sorry. Uh, looks out a lot. My people of Kiruna are good enough. Uh, side room plateau. First of all, Mr. Acting Speaker, may like talk sorry lo chair. Lo sin out blum pla come lo you ask it. Me not talk sorry lo parliament, me talk sorry lo you. As a chair, lo house blame. Thank Except you, that. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, grievance blow me two platters. Number one, I'm law, uh, when we supported the bill, law, this law, uh, act law Christian. Now, number two, I'm law constitution, not standing orders blame me law parliament, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, after the time yesterday, when we got the bill from Minister Pilaniningi. Uh, we debated, or he presented it, and we debated. My question with this regard, Amosem, what is legislative paper, Tamilukim? I was expecting. Number one is to, to find the definition of Christianity. One of something I'm defining Christianity. We must first define the word Christianity before we get a law by command of law like Christianity. Committee or set him, I'm going out right to Papua New Guinea. 
lo walk him this last survey. Na tamo come back. I'm not defining this word Christian. But in section 45 of our constitution, it stipulates very, very clear. Very, very clear. Now you may walk like Adam more on top. More on top of this land. Talk Christianity. You may have, you may must define him. This is a talk Christianity. Inside Lord Isla House. Because you cannot say I'm a Christian because the country is a Christian nation. You yet you must define him inside the bell below you. What am this word Christianity mean? Because if there was no Christ who died on the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago, there wouldn't be a word called Christianity. And you and I must define that word. Define this word. Time will go out to walk in survey, Mr. Acting Speaker. Survey go out and good place survey. That's all. Some of our speakers yesterday and today also, Governor for West New Britain for that matter, spoke about his religion and the four principles they believe in. You may call him, you may a Christian nation, Mr. Speaker. Do we live some principles like what Governor West New Britain has spoken about? Some people blame your leaders inside Lodisla House. You may call him, you may Christians, but do we live the principles of Christianity? You can call yourself Christian, but if you don't live the principles of Christianity, it becomes hypocrisy. Now, time, uh, Governor, um, talk, talk. Governor, West New Britain, Missy Down Low here and the Milk Lad and Talk Black. I remember about three years ago when he was still minister, he, walk, uh, he came back from his country, India, and he presented me a plaque. Uh, now, time, Miluki. Honorable Opposition Leader, we have a point of order. Uh, question on him saying from his country. Uh, Governor is from Papua New Guinea. Just thank that you. point can you retract and then he can continue with what he's saying. Uh, the good Opposition Leader, thank you. Your point of order is in order. Honorable uh, Opposition Leader. Country blow you, Papua New Guinea. Country where Mama Ikari me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> me, I'm Mama Sosa, you seven people of Papua New Guinea. Now you're a Papua New Guinea. Thank you. Anyway, let me get back to my point. Nah. Let me get to my point. Plenty blame me, you may call me, me Christian. That's one of the principles you may believe law. What are the principles we believe in? Also, I'm the minister, Mr. Question, one time you prime minister, the minister responsible for the bill, as the come. Let's define this word Christian. What does it mean? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, now the point, Ms. Awe, also I'm two o'clock, uh, one o'clock, come finish, Mr. Speaker, and I'll be very fast. Let me finish by saying this. Ask them, me plus sign up here, and me plus sign out, come to you. You plus sign out, come to me plus. We acted like some people blame you, you may act as a human leaders inside the house. Order. Thank you. Thank you. The word we is inclusive. The behavior yesterday wasn't we, it was them. So he should say, uh, you know, I, not, not we. Honorable Prime Minister, uh, David, uh, Ocean Leader, you may resume your seat. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Honorable. Uh, Prime Minister, your point of order, I'll rule your point of order, out of order. Thank you. The, the speaker I have heard from the both sides of the house. So, honorable, uh, honorable uh, leader for opposition, I will interrupt you that our grievance debate time has lapsed. I will not allow you, honorable uh, leader, our time of grievance debate has lapsed. Thank you. The question is that the grievance debate be noted. Those in favor say aye. aye. 
Those against say no. I save it. Leader of government business. Thank you, Speaker. We thank him. We're going to remember you, Mr. Ramlo, this week. Uh, members on this side, the member of the opposition side, we me collectively talk to the issue of the country. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to ask him that you may move him. Agenda in Parliament good Tuesday, uh, 20 February, no, 10 o'clock. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Those against, say no. I save it. Honorable members, I now urge in Parliament to 10 o'clock next week, Tuesday.